about a week ago, Mikrotik unveiled this, their new 2.5 gigabit network switch. And I think it could be an absolute game changer for home labs and small business networks alike. Let's dig in. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. In the last couple years, we're finally starting to see motherboards ship regularly with Ethernet ports that support speeds beyond one gigabit. With 2.5 quickly becoming the new standard, it might be time to start looking around for a new network switch that can support these faster speeds. Now, while there are options for 2.5 gig switches under $100, most of them only support 2.5 gigabit on every port. And while that's fine for most scenarios, if you host your own servers, you might want to consider a faster backbone to connect with the rest of your network. Before we get into it, Mikrotik did send out this switch for my review today. However, like all reviews on the channel, no money changed hands, Mikrotik gets no say over the production of this video, nor will they have the chance to see it before you do. So with all that out of the way, this is the Mikrotik CRS310 8G Plus 2S Plus IN. It's a 10 port managed switch with eight 2.5 gigabit RJ45 ports and a pair of 10 gigabit SFP plus ports for uplink or connecting to higher speed clients or servers. Power is provided by a 24 volt brick, but the switch itself is designed to accept anything between 18 and 57 volts DC. Best of all, it's priced at just $199. If you need no more explanation and you already have a situation where this switch would be handy in your environment, drop me a comment below and let me know where you'll be using this. Links for where to buy the CRS310 are down in the video description. For those that are still here, I've got a couple ideas that you might be interested in. Like I mentioned, the CRS310 is a managed network switch and it can boot into either Mikrotik's router OS or switch OS software. While I really love having a server rack in my garage, if your home server looks a little more something like this, a compact managed switch like the CRS310 might be a little bit more your jam. I built this server right here a couple months ago to prove you don't need a network rack in your house to have a home server. You can have a nice little compact unit like this with all the drive space you need. But that also means you're not necessarily going to have mounting points for a managed network switch. One of the things I recently did off camera was install a 10 gig network card into this server. And for those who keep servers next to your desktops, a couple DAC cables like this one right here are all that is needed to create a 10 gigabit link between your desktop and your home server. But what's nice about this particular form factor is while it does support dual 10 gig ports, the other ports on here at 2.5 gigabit are all RJ45, meaning you can still connect to the rest of the devices in your network with no extra adapters or funky cables like a DAC cable. In a similar vein, I've been using the Mikrotik CRS310 here in my office for the last couple of months. Like most people, my main network switch here in my office still only has gigabit through all of its RJ45 ports. With more and more devices starting to include 2.5 gigabit, I opted to start running the 310 under the desk behind me, which is where I do most of my building and testing these days. Now, since I do have 10 gigabit running into my office, I ran that 10 gig line via fiber over to my switch and I can plug it into a simple optical adapter into the SFP plus port and have a 10 gigabit backbone for all the systems that I have on that desk. That also means I can finally take advantage of faster than gigabit networking ports that are coming on all the systems that I've needed to test lately. Pay no attention to the two unreleased servers sitting behind me. Now I know I said I was pretty hyped on this switch, but physically there's nothing really revolutionary going on here, as eight port gigabit switches with dual 10 gig backhauls have been around for at least the last six or seven years. Bumping the connectivity to 2.5 gigabit on the RJ45 ports is the next logical step in this very popular form factor. The switch does come with rack mount ears if you wanted to install this into a server rack, but for my use, I like attaching my switches to the bottom side of the desk, typically by just rotating the rack ears 90 degrees and screwing them straight up. Unfortunately, the CRS310 comes with some very wide rack mount ears as it's such a small switch. So I went ahead and designed and printed out these little tiny ears that I've been using instead, and they've been working great. I will leave a link to the STL file down below in the description if you'd like to do the same. For office use, the CRS310 is basically silent most of the time, though there is a 40 millimeter fan around back. It can also get pretty loud if you stress the switch out regularly with multiple clients trying to get line rate speeds off those 2.5 gig ports. If noise is a concern, you'll likely want to do a knock to a fan swap on this system. 
Luckily, 40 mil Noctua fans can be had for only about $15, and it's a pretty easy thing to swap out. With only a single 10 gig line and a single 2.5 gig client, I never had the fan spin up on me once, but during performance testing, it did start to become an issue. So keep that in mind if you're gonna be stressing this switch out regularly. Like I mentioned, the CRS310 can boot into either router OS or switch OS. Either option gives you all the management you'd expect, from VLAN configuration, tunneling, MAC address security or ACL rules, radius authentication, link aggregation, and quite a bit more. While the CRS310 is technically a Layer 3 capable switch, I'd recommend keeping your expectations fairly tempered when it comes to Layer 3 performance. The actual network coprocessor inside the switch is a more than capable Marvell 98DX226S. It's the dual core ARM CPU that's quite a bit less so. Even Mikrotik expects layer three traffic to be hardware offloaded, which means you can set up BGP links, but don't expect the CRS310 to be doing the heavy lifting in that equation. This is a pretty common tactic for Mikrotik, and it's why they're able to keep their prices as low as they are. That said, if you're only needing layer two configuration, you can easily expect line rate out of each and every port on this switch. For just $199, I think the CRS310 8G Plus 2S Plus IN, I always hate their naming schemes, but they do make sense, is going to fill quite a few gaps in both home lab and small and medium business installations. Gigabit networking is finally being pushed aside in favor of faster standards, and most new PCs these days are already shipping with 2.5 gigabit ports. Whether you have a small business office with a single server and a half dozen PCs, or a home lab with a near identical setup, you're going to be hard pressed to find a more affordable managed switch solution than the CRS310. If you're interested in the Mikrotik CRS310, I will have Amazon affiliate links down in the video description. Make sure to go give those a look. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on social media at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, head on over to craftcomputing.store, pick yourself up one of my custom designed and made in-house nucleated pint glasses and start drinking like a pro. That's gonna do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching this fairly quick review of the CRS310. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Didn't even get to finish my beer this time. Beer for today is from Monkless Belgian Ales over in Bend, Oregon. It is the FNG, the thing, the thing, the FNG, Belgian style Abbey Ale, clocking in at 8.0%. When the FN new guy makes a mistake that turns into a happy accident, we name the beer after him. The FNG is a classic unique Belgian Abbey Ale that bridges the stylistic gap between a Dubel and a Triple with uh, dark candy syrup and Abbey yeast. Uh, they work together harmoniously to deliver a delicious balance of toffee and caramel with mild spice notes of clove and pepper in a dry, clean finish. So the FNG is the FN new guy. I like it. <laughs> By the way, is that not the worst color and font combination on the back of a can that you've ever seen? There's a reason I had to hold it here and rotate it while I was reading it. And it's not just because I'm blind. Although that didn't help. So, now that I know the backstory of this beer, did the effing new guy ever nail this one? Uh, they say happy accident. I'm going with more of a hoppy accident. There's actually some really interesting hop flavors right up front that then transition very quickly into this rich, deep malt. And then it transitions from there even further into this super rich Belgian-y uh, banana raisin bread kind of finish to it. It's a super, super interesting and complex beer that is literally like a Belgian IPA, an Irish red, and then a Belgian Abbey on the finish. Like it, and it makes that transition so seamlessly, but so quickly. This is such a weird beer to try to explain because it really is a blend of like three or four styles that hit each individually throughout the entire process. I'm a fan. 
And uh, effing new guy, keep doing what you're doing.